Welcome back to Morning Markets on Friday the 30th of April. George Bell here, Investment Analyst, to bring you up to date on the key market moves over the last 24 hours. Turning first to equity markets, the US leading the way in terms of returns, the S&P 500 up 0.68%, taking the index to a new all-time high. This was supported by upbeat earnings reports, but also evidence of economic growth, which was exceeding analyst expectations for the first quarter of 2021. We'll touch upon this in a little bit more detail shortly. Yesterday, Jeff noted the strong earnings data from large tech names, Facebook and Apple, Overnight, we received results from Amazon, who demonstrated continued strength with sales up 44% for the quarter. Revenue came in at $108.5 billion versus the expectation of $104.5 billion. They were also seeing the component of international revenue to sales outside of the US increase around 60% year on year. Overall, the net income for the period quarter 1 2020 to the end of quarter 1 2021 came in in at $26.9 billion. That was more than the previous three years combined, just to add some context there. With positive forward guidance around the firm's ability to maintain momentum and growth, the share price was actually up around 3% in after-hour trading. Though it's common for earnings season to bring a degree of volatility as analysts digest the reported data and the forward guidance relative to their own calculated expectations, implied volatility has remained relatively moderated over the week with the VIX index in at 17 spot 6. Here in the UK, the FTSE 100 was down around 3 basis points on the day. Small cap was more supported, up around 9 basis points overall. The euro stocks was off around 45 basis points with mixed earnings reports coming through there. In Asia, indices were down marginally overnight around 11 basis points. In sterling terms, there's a lot of focus on the supply chain challenges in semiconductors, which are weighing on sentiment from Chinese manufacturers who are more interlinked with global trade. The official PMI on the manufacturing side pulling in slightly to 51.1 in April from 51.9 in March. Domestic companies more insulated from global supply challenges and political tensions within the US were more positive. The Kaishin Manufacturing PMI Index was actually up to 51 spot 9 in April from 50 spot 6 in March. Within bond markets, the yield available on UK gilts or sovereign bonds with 10 or 30 years to maturity were up 4.5 and 3.5 basis points to a level of 0 spot 84% and 1 spot 35%. In Europe, the holders of 10 year German bonds demanded a greater yield as higher energy and input costs led to inflation levels actually exceeding market expectations, inflation coming in at around 2% there, taking yields up 3.5 basis points to a level of negative 0.19% there. The yield available on US Treasuries of the same maturity profile, so 10 to 30 years, was up 2.5 and 1 basis points on the day to 1.63% and 2.29%. The yield has continued to push out with the US 10-year yield nine basis points higher than where it was one week ago as investors have been awaiting the forward guidance and detail of policy by the Federal Reserve, but also reflected the digestion of signs of an improving economic landscape overall. Within currency markets, it was a stronger day for sterling, up 0.32% on a trade-weighted basis. The dollar relatively flat, up around 11 basis points on the day. Sterling against the dollar is currently trading at around 139, still, and against the euro, around 115. Within commodity markets, the index was broadly flat on the day. You had slightly weaker agricultural commodity prices, but it was supported overall by higher energy prices, and the real, driven by the realisation of strong growth within the US. Brent crude oil was actually up around 1.9% on the day, taking the current price of a barrel to $68.5. In terms of economic data prints, yesterday we received two positive pieces of news from the US. The first to note is just going back to the economic growth rate. The data came in stronger than initially anticipated by economic analysts. It was up around 6.4% on an annualised basis over the first quarter of 2021. The number demonstrates another strong improvement in the growth picture, adding weight behind the pathway of positive recovery, which has been painted by Jay Powell, but also President Biden there. Growth was supported over the quarter by increased consumption levels. So consumption levels were up around 10.7% over the quarter. This was stimulated by the direct checks 
to individuals under the December and the March COVID relief bill. Breaking that number down further, spending on durable goods was up 41%. However, the challenges faced within the service sector was evident, as data demonstrated there, a 4.6% increase in spending. So whilst low relative to the manufacturing side of the economy, the number is still demonstrating expansion, and there's a growing anticipation that this dial will begin to shift in the second and third quarter. Business fixed investment was also up, increasing 9.9% over the quarter, as companies look to increase production capacity and integrate technology into a greater number of stages of the operations process to improve efficiency, but also to help them meet demand. Rising demand is evident that it's, incre- it's outstripping supply at this point in time. This was demonstrated in the numbers yesterday, where we saw a change in inventory levels or stock levels down 2.6% over the quarter. The second positive point being the number of Americans filing for new unemployment benefits actually came down again week on week to a level of 553,000. For context, this is the lowest level of initial claims which we've seen in the US since the initial outbreak of the pandemic with a number of citizens receiving vaccinations increasing by the day. The second point to note here is only around 25% of those who do actually make initial claims will be deemed uh, to, to, to meet the criteria in terms of eligibility there, just to add some context to that, that headline number. The vaccination is a, an important factor in unlocking many of the areas of the economy, especially within the service sector, allow that rate to continue to fall. For reference, the average weekly figure prior to the pandemic was around 230,000 per week. At present, the US have around 42% of the population having received at least one dose of the vaccine. Keep an eye out for our podcast going live to data on the YouTube channel and also our weekly roundup article, which will be available via the blog. This week, we'll be focusing on the political and the market factors which are evolving in the UK. Thank you for watching. We'll be back on Tuesday morning after the bank holiday weekend and look forward to bringing you up to date on morning markets. Subscribing to the True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to your YouTube app on your phone, type in True Potential and press the red subscribe option. You'll then be notified as and when new videos are released.